Ralph here from Wood Academy with a few words about shoulder planes. As I've explained many times, I don't have a mortising machine. And so when I do a mortise and tenon joint, I tend to make the tenons a little bit oversized and then fit them to the individual mortises that I make. And this is because I drill the mortises out and then chisel them square. They're all just a little bit different and if I cut all of my tenons to fit one, they may not fit them all. This way, I can tailor each joint so every one of them is a perfect fit. This has worked very, very well for me over the years. But what I haven't really explained up until now is the tool that I prefer to use to fit my tenons into my mortises. And that's the shoulder plane. Now what makes a plane a shoulder plane is the blade being open right to the side of the body of the plane, as we see in these two. We need to be able to shave this entire surface of our tenon right up to the shoulder of the part, or else it's not going to fit. On a standard plane, the blade is never quite as wide as the body, and so there's a little gap that if I were to try to use this plane as it is to shave off this tenon, I would leave probably about an eighth of an inch behind. And you can see even on this plane, the blade comes right out to the shoulder here and not quite to the shoulder there. Now, one of the cool parts about this Lee Nielsen is that the side that makes it a standard block plane is removable, opening up that side to become a shoulder plane. So the Lee Nielsen is excellent for working from my left hand and the Veritas is excellent for working from my right hand but sometimes older is better. This is an Ohio Toolworks um, shoulder plane and the blade comes out to both sides. So realistically speaking this plane can do its job working from either side right up to the shoulder of our part. It takes very little practice to begin getting excellent results with your shoulder plane. A bench hook or a couple of low profile dogs as I'm using here will hold the part steady as you cut. This is cutting across the grain so the blade needs to be sharp and the plane set for a fine cut. And while I happen to own three different shoulder planes, you only actually need one. You don't need to be too aggressive at this point. Take a little bit off each side of the tenon and then check the fit in your mortise. Set to a fine cut, the shoulder plane allows you to really tailor the fit to exactly how tight you want it to be. First we'll adjust the tenon side to side and then do the ends for length. The other major advantage to doing your mortises and tenons this way is that we can adjust the position of the tenon to set the part exactly where we want it relative to the mortise. We can quickly and easily remove more material from one side than the other to set the part so they either fit flush or with the proper reveal that we're looking for. And this is a level of control that's difficult to achieve using machines. Both this Veritas shoulder plane and my Lee Nielsen are beautiful tools that work really well. And they both function as excellent block planes for more general use. So either one would get a lot of use in your shop. The wooden Ohio Toolworks shoulder plane is actually an antique, and I love using it. But it may not be your best choice for your first shoulder plane. Now while we're covering all this, I want to point out that another option for adjusting the overall length of your tenons is a good sharp chisel. It can be difficult to accurately control a hand plane on a very thin tenon. So in those cases, the chisel becomes a viable option. Combining the efficiency of woodworking machines with the fine control of hand tools provides the best possible results. 
you can see how this process plays out in my projects on our Woodcademy show, streaming free on Amazon Prime.